Hi everybody, welcome to the webinar. Um, we'll just wait a couple of minutes to let as many people join as possible and then we'll we'll get cracking in, in about two minutes or so. Okay, it already looks like we've got a fair few people joining, so um, I'll just get started. Um, so I'm Lily from Triptease, and I'll be moderating the webinar today. Um, I'm here with Scott from Triptease and Estella from SHR, who will be introducing themselves in a moment. Uh, I just want to take a couple of minutes just to walk through uh, what we'll be talking about today, how the webinar software works, and uh, how you can get in touch with any questions. Um, so our topic today is the new mess search, smart bidding with Google for guest acquisition and conversion. And we've got a real range of companies on the call today. So we'll start by taking um, a bit of a, a zoomed out look, um, talking about, um, we're talking about um, why meta search matters, uh, kind of zooming in on some of Google's recent changes. Uh, then we'll talk a little bit about uh, what Triptease have been doing recently um, in terms of our technology, how we are looking at the kind of which levers to pull, how to really optimize your performance in a meta search function, and then taking a look at the full funnel view from acquisition through to conversion and how you can really start to use both of those strategies to power each other. Um, so the software we're using is GoToWebinar, so you should all have a control panel. So um, there's a questions bar on there, so you can submit questions at any time, um, whether it's to do with um, anything technical, you can't hear us, you can't see us properly, and just let us know. Or if you have questions about any of the content, do put them in there and we'll come to the, as many as we can at the end. If there are questions that we don't have time for, we'll be following up afterwards. Um, so I'll get started. Um, so um, this is uh, Scott and Estella. So Scott, I was wondering if you could just start by introducing yourself and Triptees. Hi everyone, um, Scott here from Triptees. So I am a product manager on our guest acquisition product. So many of you, I assume, will know Triptees already. We've been around for five or so years helping hotels convert guests on their hotel websites. In the last kind of six to nine months, um, we've moved beyond the hotel website, realizing that we have tons and tons of really exciting data that we've been collecting from hundreds of millions of user journeys, and realized that we can harness that and push that into meta search auctions to drive your guest acquisition strategy. Perfect, and Estella, if you could tell us a bit about yourself and SHR. Absolutely. Welcome, everyone. I am Estella Hale, and I am the Chief Product Evangelist at SHR. In this role, I help determine uh, strategy for product development here at SHR. And what we do at SHR is we do distribution technology. We've been pioneering advanced distribution technology for over a decade. And um, we do so by helping to just simplify the complex world of hoteliers with our technology. And then we provide the intelligent support that is needed to support it. Fantastic, thank you. Um, someone's on the line just saying that we have a slight issue with an echo, so I'm just going to revert to the microphone. Um, I hope that fixes the problem. Do let me know if you're, if you're still hearing an echo. Um, but in the, time, uh, in the meantime, let's move on and begin uh, with some of the content. So, Estella, I was hoping you could take us through um, why are we talking about meta search now? Kind of uh, why is it kind of feels like there's been a resurgence in its importance and how much hoteliers are talking about it. So maybe you could just take us through the bigger picture of why we're talking about it now. Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes, That this is not new, but it is definitely very, very relevant, very relevant now, particularly with the changes that we're seeing in Google. And Google really, they're in a great position to be a meta search provider for hotels because, well, they're the meta search providers for everything else. And they focus a lot on the user experience. So what I see is that this matters from a distribution perspective. Well, number one, because your guests are there. And since your guests are there, and one of the main purposes of appearing on these online travel and digital presence is to reach your guests where they are. So it is very important and very relevant. Fantastic, thanks. Um, so Scott, maybe you could take us through what we're looking at on this slide and, and some of the functionalities um, around Mesh Search. Yeah, sure. So here I've just got um, three different examples. Um, 
of some of the different meta search sites. So there are about 40 or 50 different meta search sites globally that, that we recognize, but really the, <clears throat> there's a long tail of quite small uh, providers, and, but really it's, it's much more concentrated up at, the, up at the top end. So we think that Google have around about 50% market share in terms of the bookings delivered through Meta, uh, with TripAdvisor and Trivago following in kind of uh, second and third place. And then there are other big players such as Skyscanner, Bing, WeGo, Hotels Combined, and Kayak. Um, focusing in on Google, you know, as we said, this is the biggest player, and they're also the fastest growing. Um, I just thought it would be worth uh, contextualizing actually what meta search is for those that are, aren't so familiar with the subject. So <clears throat> as you can see on this Google panel here, I've got three different colored rectangles. So just to make it really clear as to which bit we means which. In the green uh, rectangle at the bottom, this is the like organic search listing. So this is typically what your SEO optimization is for. It's how can we get the highest listing uh, within the search engine results page here. In the blue box, these are the Google ads. Um, so these are the paid uh, AdWords um, kind of promotions that hotels can offer. But you know, these aren't limited to just hotels. You know, any um, any kind of uh, business are able to participate in these. On the right, however, um, this is the, the bit that we're talking about today. This is the meta search panel. Um, and as you can see here, this is this panel will appear when you make a branded search for the hotel. So, and that's important to, to point out. If I typed in here, Luxury Hotels New York, um, this, this panel wouldn't appear. So once you actually uh, actually type the name of the hotel, this, will, this, uh, this panel pops up. I guess one of the, the first things to point out that you'll notice is that there's some imagery at the top. There's a map. Um, you can see information such as you know, how many stars a hotel has, its address, and phone. Um, but most importantly uh, is the price. And really what differentiates MetaSearch from an OTA is that MetaSearch is like an index or library um, of different prices. Meta channels don't actually sell the hotel room. They're merely linking through to other um, providers that actually are selling their inventory. And so as you can see here, there's that direct price listed right at the top um, with OTAs underneath it. Fantastic. Thanks, Scott. Um, again, if you do have any questions, um, just do keep uh, throwing them in. If they're kind of pertinent to what Scott's talking about right now, then we'll, we'll put them straight to him or otherwise we'll save them to the end. Um, so moving on to our kind of our next topic or our next slide. Um, Asana, maybe you could talk us through what can we see uh, Google doing in the travel space um, and why are they important to this discussion? Yes, definitely. They've, they've recently um release this very clean, very uncluttered map-based user interface. And data indicates that both from the travel perspective and the hotel perspective, searches are starting on Google. And with this recent changes on, on the user interface, it indicates that Google is aiming to keep that traveler, that journey, that search, on their platform for longer. So think of the path that uh, has been typically followed with meta search, and, and Scott did a great job describing right now how um, that end path of booking happens when they click away from it. Well, that is extending. Google's intention is extend the traveler journey for longer, um, but specifically, I'm gonna call on Scott to tell us more about the interface. <laughs> Sure. So this interface is um, it's actually really new. I mean, it's it's incredible how often Google are experimenting with new things. I mean, we need to remember that Google's mission statement is to make the world's information accessible online, and so they are constantly iterating and trying new things to optimize the travel journey. And so they're, they're making strides in not only hotels, but in flights, in uh, restaurants, and in listings like this. And they're synthesizing a lot of these different um, different data sources, and they're bringing them together in a really like easy to use UI, such as you can see here. I'm sure lots of you will, if you haven't seen this already, will, will think that this is actually very similar to Airbnb. I mean, we think it's, it looks pretty similar. Um, and obviously Airbnb uh, and Google are both best in class uh, at, at you know, mm -hmm. conversion rate optimization. Um, and so you know, it's no surprise that Google will continue to do things like this to work out how they can best monetize um, their, their travel partners. 
Absolutely. And I think what, what some people have picked up on from this new interface is that um, there's obviously a great deal of pricing information and the meta search auction, but it does seem that there's quite a lot of organic information being brought in as well, whether it's reviews or photos. Um, so I wonder if we could explore a little bit the question of um, meta search uh, engines have always historically been supplier agnostic. Mm -hmm. um, whereas is there any indication that Google are kind of leaning towards the direct provider? Sure. So, so Google acting as a uh, like an auction place or as a marketplace for different, you know, uh, vendors to, to place their inventory. They have to be, you know, channel agnostic, <clears throat> and you know, people wouldn't simply wouldn't want to participate in those auctions if the, the you know the cards were, were the, the, the decks were stacked. Um, and that's you know that's. That kind of uh, what we think to be as a bit of like a rumor is probably even more so the case when you look at some of the uh, meta search channels such as like Kayak and Chivago, which actually are both partly or wholly owned by Booking and Expedia Holdings. But again, you know these guys are obviously like vetted and audited and to make sure that everything is um, you know it is fair. The one thing that like Google do say that they will discriminate on in terms of from one supplier to another. Is on price accuracy. Google are, you know, as Estella mentioned earlier, you know, all about that user experience. And one of the most damaging things you can do to your meta search campaign and to your reputation in the eyes of the consumer is to show a price or send a price to Google that actually, when they, the user clicks through to that link, is then incorrect or more expensive than than they were than they were uh, than they were anticipating. If this happens. Google will uh, really like penalize you and they will make it more expensive for you to bid, which will impact your ROI. So that's the only thing I can really think of in terms of you know, how Google treat different partners. Uh, Google, really important. Yeah. About seven, out of, uh, seven or eight out of all hotel searches starting here. Um, when it actually comes to the meta piece, one of the first things and one of the, like, the lowest hanging fruit um, kind of things that a hotel can do is to sort out their Google My Business listing. So in conversations with the, uh, the head of Google Travel here in EMEA, he was saying that still a really surprisingly high amount of hotels don't actually have the correct information listed within Google My Business. So if there's one thing that you guys do um, after the call today, it's if you haven't looked at that in a while, go through, make sure that your uh, address and your phone number are up to date, that the website links through to the right place, that you've selected the right photo if you're able to do that, um, and all of these kind of really basic things that just can will take you you know 20 minutes to update, but will really change how your hotel is presented on the most important website in the world. Um, kind of moving on to to meta search. So you know I, I referred to you earlier to some of the features of this meta search panel, um, which you can see here on the right hand side. Um, there's, there's a few different um, like ways in which the, you can really succeed in the auction. The first of those is simply to be there. So, you know, we know that the users are there. To really like, I guess, put some data behind that, OTAs are getting 24% of their inbound traffic from Meta Search. That's massive. Like one in four of their, of their inbound users are coming from, from Meta. From the average hotel, it's only 2%. So there's this enormous, difference, right, between how well hotels are really like monetizing and, and I guess like harnessing the power of meta versus what the OTAs are doing. And so we think that it's just, you know, again, if there's something else that, you, you know, there's another key takeaway take from this uh, from this webinar, it's that you, you really need to be there. You know, quite simply, someone, you know, a client wants to put it to me, they're like, Scott, I think you've got like a shopping list. And if you're not there, you're not going to get bought. And, and that's exactly right. So. That's, that's step one, is making sure that you actually have a presence within Meta. Um, and then after that, we can kind of look into, this, uh, look into this panel and we can look at the different aspects of what's going to really drive success. So number one is parity. Inherently, if someone is looking on the Meta search uh, panel, be it on Google or Trivago, TripAdvisor or, or any of the others, they're price conscious because they're not just going blindly to your site or to their OTA of choice. They want to shop around. They want to see what they're, where they can get the best price. So it's really important that you're putting your best foot forward um, and that you're showing uh, your, your potential customers or maybe even your existing loyalty customers that you, you are the, the best place in terms of price to, uh, to for them to purchase a room. So at Triptease, we have a... 
you know a market leading solution in our in our on-site parity tool and we're really kind of delighted that we're able to roll that out into meta search as well so we were actually able to um, stop you from being shown when you're being undercut on Google and so what that means is that we can both protect your brand um, from, you know, especially if you're like a luxury brand, the last thing that you want to do is really reinforce this idea in the consumer's mind that there's a better better place for, uh, for them to purchase your, you know, your product. Um, but also it really makes a real big economic impact because actually even if you are being undercut on Meta and you show anyway, a user will often click your click your website, have a look around just to get a better feel for the brand because we know that the vast majority of users who book on an OTA don't just book on that OTA without checking you know, the website. They want to go and really get a better, you know, look at more images, really get to see the descriptions of the rooms as written by the hotel themselves. So that's costing you money. So that's what we think is the probably another key takeaway is that you've got to be managing your priority on Meta. Um, the other things that we're doing is making sure that we're um, and the other things that you know anyone should be doing is making sure that you're showing to the right people. So we've uh, created what we call a guest value index, and what that means is we're looking at both demographic information as well as behavioural information to to establish who we want to show to and how much we're willing to pay um, to show to that individual. So within Google, there are uh, five or six different levers that you're able to the uh, you're able to pull in order to manipulate how much you want to pay to uh, feature in that auction. So these things include, you know, where, which user is the country coming from, sorry, which country is the user coming from, what device are they browsing from, what's their length of stay, when are they looking to check in, and, and things like that. And so these are really kind of complex to all do in tandem, and that's why we've approached this with a sort of AI machine learning type approach, because it's, you know, it's really profoundly hard to do this um, like at scale and for especially if you have multiple properties or you have guests coming from lots of different markets um, so in order to really drive like uh, ROI you want to make sure that you are making sure that you're only really showing to those high value guests who are most likely to convert and not to those people that are early on in their purchasing journey or from markets that are really unlikely to ever stay at your hotel um, thanks Scott cool. um, I think although we've had a bit of a disjointed experience so far today, so I think we might we might have missed it. But I was wondering if we could just run, return to. I think some people on the call might be wondering um, what are the differences. So we've talked about kind of how how best to perform on Meta Search, but for people just entering into it, what are the different payment and pricing options that people have, and how does that differentiate from an OTA? Sure. So broadly speaking, there are two uh, there are kind of two ways or two different camps that, that you can participate in Meta Search. One is Kind of what Google calls CPC, which is where you have a fixed media budget uh, every month. So you might say, for my hotel, I have five thousand um, dollars, and you spend that with Google as best you can. Uh, and you know, you're, clearly, your objective there is to get the highest amount of bookings or highest amount of booking uh, value that you can from that fixed budget. The other way is uh, kind of what Google call that performance models, which is where you either pay on a per conversion basis or on a per stay basis. So this is some uh, often a method that, or a payment kind of structure that hotels that are new to message search like because it means that there's no upfront risk. You only pay when Google actually delivers a booking. And so if you're thinking about how can I kind of test out the waters and see if meta search is something that works at the hotel, that would be that would be you know quite a, a common entry point. Okay, fantastic. Thanks so much. Um, now, Stella, um, if we return to you, um, I just wanted to again zoom back outwards and think about what are the implications um, of all of this for hotels, kind of Google moving into their own travel sites, um, this emphasis on meta search being the place to kind of be appearing. But, like, wondering if you could take a, a bit more of a zoomed out approach to, to how hotels should be feeling. Absolutely. Um, so, Lily, going back to just distribution strategy and what we were mentioning earlier about just the motivator behind the digital presence and the digital effort of a hotel and a channel. What we're seeing on our side, we, we connect hotels to pretty much every channel 
uh, uh, that is available as a central reservation system. And we're seeing a tiredness of connecting to hundreds of channels, which was a focus several years ago, and that hotels are now really focusing on their best producing ones. And after all, they should, because the channels are a means to an end, and connecting to the guest is the primary purpose. So I think by focusing on that strategy and on that purpose, MetaSearch and MetaSearch with Google, it's an important channel to have on a distribution mix. Of course, guided by strategy, like Scott was mentioning, if you know the specific markets you want to reach, if you know the specific segments you want to reach, you can tailor that bidding so that you appear for those um, for those guests, or you can start if you if if it is something that what you're taking out of those webinar is that you want to start. Well, you know, look at um, the flat fee model that your central distribution provider offers, but then do more. So short story: appear, compete, and decide when it's relevant and for which market. Absolutely, and we've had a question in actually from James that's, that's relevant to I think what both of you are saying. So in terms of thinking about it as part of your distribution mix, we have a question. Based on your Google Hotel Ads experience, I think this is one for Scott, do you recommend unlimited budget for your ad spend because return on investment ROI is almost always better than OTA commission? Sure, so I think that's a, that's a really good question. Um, in terms of finding the, the right level of spend, it's a little bit of uh, trial and error. However, I think what you should do, James, is think about how much are you paying your OTA partners? And then if you say, okay, on average I'm paying, let's say 15% or 20%, uh, and then say, do I value a direct booking as much as that? We would argue, yes, you should value direct booking as much as an OTA booking if not more, because you get more data from them, and then there's a much higher chance that you'll actually win that guest back who will come through an organic channel, so you won't have to pay to reacquire them. So we know that the more you spend um, on MetaSearch, the actually over, like up to a certain point, you can, you'll can you drive more volume, but then you get into this uh, kind of like diminishing returns where actually you'll start to spend more, uh, but you won't generate a lot more volume, but your return on investment will decrease. So really what you're trying to do in terms of optimizing your spend, if you're able to have an unlimited budget, then great, but as long as your distribution cost or your cost of sale remains kind of in line with uh, where your OTA partners are at. Fantastic. Estella, did you have anything to add on to that one or, or should we move on to the next slide? No, I think that was a great approach. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, so what we wanted to cover in this webinar today, as well as uh, acquisition and meta search and, and what we're starting to look at at Triptease, was also how can this be related to the conversion experience and the conversion strategy. Um, so Estella, I was wondering if you could talk us through, we've focused so far on bidding, price parity, acquisition. How should we tell people about converting guests once they arrive within the booking engine? Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think we have looked at the at the pragmatic side and, and and while we continue doing that I do want to take a pause and say that this I, I believe this is a very exciting this is a great opportunity for hotels to really appear where the guests are looking during their travel plans and then to link them to their own website where they can tailor the content where they can tailor the offers where they can um, again optimize the eyes that come to the site and optimize that that conversion. So of course the booking engine experience is going to be very important. The assurance of uh, um, the deal that they selected to land on is going to be important. Parity, as Scott was mentioning, uh, uh, not only for that guest experience because it, but also because it can penalize you with Google if you do not have the way that that you have advertised but but definitely i think this is an exciting great opportunity for hotels it is something that if put on their distribution mix and with a good guest experience because again as google's improving in that guest experience they expect some of that 
similar experience when they land on your site, all of that is part of the conversion experience. Fantastic. And Scott, I suppose to you, historically, I think we've seen from our side the areas of acquisition and conversion being dealt with maybe quite separately where, uh, in, a, in a hotelier's kind of strategy. So what are the potential benefits and opportunities we're seeing from, from starting to take a slightly more holistic view? Yeah, so, so as I mentioned earlier, you know, like data, I think that I'm, you know, I have heard this a million times now, but data really is you know, the greatest asset you have when it comes to digital marketing. And the OTAs know this, and every day that goes on, they are, you know, collecting billions and billions more data points that enable them to make more sophisticated decisions so they can, kind of sad to say this, but ultimately steal traffic away from hotels more efficiently and more cheaply. So it's really about looking at the data that you have um, and really harnessing that and pushing that into all the different arenas you can, and bringing it together and really breaking down those data silos. Um, so, you know, like if you if you have um, Google Analytics, you're able to look at what's the typical profile of people that stay at your your hotel. How's that changing from day to day, from month to month? Um, and really using that to inform the, the kind of the bidding decisions that you want to make. Now. Again, this is this is pretty hard work, and that's why actually the majority of uh, hotels use an agency um, such as Shriptees to make a lot of these decisions for them because it requires an intense amount of work um, in, in order to do it correctly and to make sure you really are paying the right amount for for each of those clicks. Um, the I think the really like exciting thing is that actually like there is there is so much opportunity here and that when it's done correctly this can really really move the needle for for hotels so I mean from Tripti's hotels live on Meta over the last kind of month or so we're seeing up to around 10% of uh, conversion value has come from Meta search so it really is substantive in, in you know driving your direct volumes um, and the really great thing is that we see is when you're actually able to tie up that Meta search journey through to the on-site journey. So we can do some really cool things, such as if you have any direct booking benefits, we can surface those through through Meta Search callouts, where it's like a little subtitle. So you could say, you know, book direct for a free breakfast, or the kind of things that the OTAs can't compete with you on. So you really need to find your like natural advantages you have, and then really like showcase those um, on places such as Meta. You know, then there's other things you can think about, um, which is. How can you use a, you know software to you know really personalize that experience, acknowledging the journey that someone has had before they've arrived on the site? And you know, as Estella said, you know, perhaps that means tailoring the content or recognizing the type of search they've made. You know, if they have said um, they've added children into their uh, mix on Meta, maybe you want to think about more like a family type room rate, or maybe if it's a single traveler, you want to show them some business packages. So there's loads and loads of scope to really make sure that your website. Is really speaking to that individual, um, and that's ultimately going to boost boost your conversion rates um, and direct booking revenue. Fantastic, thanks. Um, I think probably um, we have some time now. I know we lost some time with the technical difficulties to move to a bit more of an open Q and A. So I can see many of you have already started submitting. So do to keep those coming. And um, to begin with, we have a question from James, different James to earlier. Um, have there any been any have there been any studies about what percentage of the time users choose the website link versus an official hotel site meta link when it is shown at parity? So I think this means if an OTA and a hotel are both at the same price on an meta search auction, do we know is there a preference? Yeah. So so I think there's two data points um, I've got here. Uh, one of those is um, one of those is around what's the share, um, you know, if, assuming that you are present within Meta, what's the share uh, of clicks that you get? Now, this isn't something that Google actually discloses, but actually I was literally reading just this morning that they will be, uh, as they move, uh, they're kind of improving their Google Hotel Ad system, they will actually start disclosing the click share volume, so you know actually what's like your brand carry or affinity that you can you can get from meta search so that will be really interesting to benchmark but what we do know um, and this is from I think a focus right or a skiff study that was uh, done at the end of last year 
is that eight out of 10 of users that make a search uh, on Google, like don't actually make it onto the direct website in that first click. So OTAs or, or other meta search engines that are bidding on your brand terms or that just happen to be there perhaps you know, above the hotel are sapping away uh, traffic that was ultimately destined for your website. And so it means you're having to often like, you know, that, that's coming at a, you know, to your site in a really indirect way. The other data point in there that I think is really interesting, um, which is in reference to parity. So again, speaking with the um, uh, the head of Google Hotel Ads here in, in London, um, he said that uh, you know across all of the hotels that they look at, your click through rate is three times higher when you're in parity or cheaper direct. So it really has a profound impact um, to be managing your uh, your managing your parity in terms of how many more people you're going to drive to your website. And I think that goes back to, again, the concept of number one, appear. Uh, uh, Scott mentioned earlier the percentages of traffic to the booking page of OTA versus your direct site. I think it was something like 2% versus 20%. So number one, appear. Number two, compete. So again, show up with a price. Use the technology that you have to distribute to all of those channels. and and, and the case of a CRS, you can derive rates to know that you're not going to have a, a, a rate that is that is lower on, on an OTA. But then also, I think you do have to take into consideration that you're going to bid when it's relevant. So yes, the, the, the percentage of how many people click to is important, but it's also important to look at from a distribution strategy perspective and what you are, the results that you are getting on, on that conversion or on that investment, that digital marketing investment of uh, meta search versus OTA or increasing traffic, et cetera. So the, I think the numbers show the relevance, but I think also looking into how you're going to approach from a strategy perspective and what you expect to have as a return from appearing and from competing and from when it's relevant is also important. Great, thanks Estella. Um, we've had one in as well, which I think many people have probably, well, I've definitely seen this commented on myself, is do we think um, with the, the kind of dot, the Google travel site, do we think that they're moving towards becoming an OTA? Can we envision facilitated bookings? I don't know, what do you think? Yeah. Well, in a way, I would say they already are somewhat of an OTA. They, they definitely have a different business model, but they intend to be the place where people will plan their travel. They intend to enable purchase of that travel on their site. So, again, not, we might it might look a little bit different because their business model is different, but in a certain way they are a place for people to to plan travel and where they very much facilitate the purchase mm. would you agree scott that, that google are moving into ota territory yeah it, it's really it's a difficult one and if you ask google they'd say no you know expedia and booking combined are two probably of their largest five or ten customers globally I think they're spending six or seven billion dollars a year just on performance marketing and you know for those of you out there who, who aren't you know currently participating on Google that's a pretty good indicator you know these are two absolute giants of the value that, that can be unlocked from from you know efficiently participating in Meta. so you know Google has to be really careful with how they're perceived in terms of being an OTA because they don't want to upset two of their best customers. However, it does seem more and more like they are moving into that space, especially with the book on uh, Google kind of functionality that was uh, has been released in the last couple of months that actually enables hotels to um, allow their conversion experience to take place off-site and Google will actually do all of that process for hotels, albeit at quite high expense, pretty in line with an OTA, maybe a little bit less. And also, from think from their perspective, they want to provide, they want to be the place where that traveler can find the best information. That is the first objective. And so 
if hoteliers outside of the OTAs are not providing that data, uh, of course, the, the ad spend is very, very attractive, but also that, that partnership with OTAs and Google is very important because they have the amount of relevant data that they want to bring to, to the user of the search engine. Return on investment for meta search compared to, say, taking part in PPC text ads? Yes, it's, it's a good question. And I think it's, it, it depends quite a lot on lots of different factors. Um, you know, even across the, the different meta search channels, we see different levels of return. I think there was a, a benchmark study that came out last year that showed, on average, the return on ad spend for meta search was around I think 7 to 11 X um, as, a, as a rough like benchmark so between yeah somewhere between 7 and 11 um, dollars for every dollar spent um, versus Google AdWords which was a little bit lower I think it was more in the kind of like 6 to 9 region so it is it is slightly higher and one of the predominant reasons for that is as I, as I kind of explained earlier is Meta search cards really only appear once you've typed in the name uh, you know, of that hotel. Whilst there is this map view here, there were still really early days in that. And actually, the vast majority of the impressions are coming through from that, uh, that meta panel that appears on the right-hand side rather than through the map view. And so what that means is the user has actually is already aware of your, your brand and they've typed it in. And so what that means is that there's less like wasted clicks or less prospect, prospecting um, in terms of if you're bidding for brand, you know, sorry, non-brand terms such as, you know, airport hotels in London or, or things like that. So that probably explains the kind of ROI because it's a more focused spend. Great. We have a question in from Gopuma who's asked, um, what factors does Google take into consideration? Um, I think uh, the question is regarding the, the order in which channels appear in an auction. Um, is it just pure cost per click, or did Google give weightage to commission percentage, last transacted volume, other parameters? Is there anything we know about this? Sure. So um, the way Google operates is on a second price auction. So uh, the winning bid will pay just like a, a cent or a penny more than the second highest bid. Uh, and so just to kind of explain that, so if there are five people in the auction and the first bid is five dollars and second bid is three dollars the actual the winning bid will be three dollars and one cent and then after that it will just be ordered by by rank so the, that's really all the the only things that they're taking into consideration are yeah that really that bid amount and then as well as the, what i mentioned earlier which was that price accuracy score because they will penalize you and make it more expensive if you you know to try and incentivize you to make sure that your, your prices are being accurate but those are the two real key considerations in terms of percentages yeah clearly if someone is offering to pay a higher cpa if it's 14 versus 12 percent then that will reflect in a higher bid um and so that uh, that provider will appear higher up. perfect thank you scott um patrick asks what is your preferred bidding model on Google hotel ads and have you integrated any Google audiences to boost performance for particular clients? Sure. Uh, so when Triptees are, are bidding on Google hotel ads, we're, we don't, we're not using their automated tools. Um, we are always using our, our own like AI machine learning to make like bespoke bidding decisions. In terms of like from a client's perspective, we have, as I said earlier, we have two options. The, the, uh, we give, which are, you know, you can pay on a performance basis, so you pay on pay per per booking that we deliver, or you can actually um, you can give us a, a media budget, which we will spend on your behalf, which can work out as you know being actually you get slightly greater ROI, but there's a you know a little bit more risk with it because you have to give away that that cash up front. In terms of audience list, this is something that we think is super super exciting, and this is a great example of where tying together both your on-site conversion you know, data and experience with off-site and uh, meta search where they really come together. So we can, you know, using audience lists, you can do really cool things such as when you see certain behaviors that happen on your site, you can put that user into a bucket. 
So if we see, for example, um, there's a user who's made a search for their family to go and stay in the south of France over summer, and they've been on your, and they've made three searches over the last five days, you can be pretty sure that that, that person is, is looking to, to stay at your property. So you're able to, through Google, create an audience list um, of maybe you call them like high value bookers or high intent bookers. And when you see certain behaviors, like user has made X many searches, um, you can put them into that bucket. And then if you see them again on Google, you can then pay more for them to make sure that you are appearing higher up than the OTAs. And again, this is that kind of like unfair advantage that, that you can get. And you know, that, that, that really has like a massive impact and that links into the guest value index that we spoke about earlier. Great. Um, Gopu asks again, um, we've noticed that a lot of OTAs have the ability to showcase more information on meta results, presumably than the direct mm -hmm. sites. Uh, this information can range from better CTA messages, additional room types, um, so I guess why is this, and um, is this an option available to independents? Yeah, so there's two additional pieces of information that you can show. One is the CTA message, or what Google call a call out. So these can be up to 25 characters in length, and Google have to approve them manually. But this is this is where you know every hotel that we have uh, will have a call out live because it's an opportunity. These typically only appear if you're an ad slot one or two, normally just in one. Um, and it's just that extra bit of text underneath the listing. And maybe actually, if we go back, just so it's, so it's really clear what what we mean here. Sorry, I'm just um, is so if you can see here underneath where it says. A hotel icon it says book direct best prices exclusive deals and so you're trying to put some things out there that will really like grab the attention of the consumer and just by having like a few more characters it instantly you know draws the eye towards that listing so you think that's a really like no-brainer thing to have that costs no no extra money in terms of that click it's free for you to have so all all listings should have that um, in terms of the room types, so this is an experimental feature that Google have, which is called their room booking module. Um, and you know, through that, you are able to look at the different uh, like configurations of rooms that are available. And like actually, on most of these listings, if you, uh, they'll often say like view more rates. And within the Google UI, you can look at you know the standard, deluxe, queen, king, or presidential suite. Often, all of those prices will be listed but it's only over the cheapest price that is shown. Um, in terms of what Google are doing with that, you know, sometimes it appears, sometimes it doesn't. It's, it feels like one of the things that they're experimenting with, but certainly something that hotels can take advantage of. You just need to speak to your connectivity provider in order to enable it. Mm -hmm. Thanks, I think what you were saying there about using those call-outs reminded me, instead of what you were talking a little bit about earlier with the, when we were talking about conversion, is if you have that information and you do have those benefits and you do have that differentiating factor from an OTA, making it as visible and as obvious as possible at every stage um, is super important. Correct, correct. And, that, and as Scott mentions uh, also, of course, start by checking that your connectivity provider has, has that Google feed so that, um, so that then you can exercise some of these options. Absolutely. Um, I think. Oh, Scott, did you want to jump in? No, I think I just one of the things I was going to say. It, you know, if you're if you're thinking about, okay, well, this sounds really interesting. How do I get connected up to uh, to Google? There are there are a number of different connectivity providers, um, but there's actually there's kind of two parts to the the meta like to the meta search piece. There's connectivity and then there's management. So there's about forty or so different companies which Google lists online on their website that enable to uh, get you on, onto Google and onto all the other different uh, meta search providers. And these can plumb into really your booking engine or your CRS or your channel manager, or your PMS. But that, that's just kind of like one piece of the puzzle. And then the second piece is the management. And then there's really there two routes you can choose. It's do I want to do self-manage and do I want to make all these decisions myself? Do I want to give it to Google? I'm um, going to let Google kind of do that. The only thing I would say with you know the Google automation is that you need to remember they have slightly different incentives to you. They're trying to maximize the revenue they get rather than maximizing the amount of bookings that you get. Or you can you know go to an agency um, who will manage you know that bidding for you and really who that's their, their expertise. And typically we see that there's a real uplift that you can get from, from doing that. Great, thanks. So I think we're coming to the end of our time today, and I hope the content has been useful. Um, I also wanted to say a really big thank you to Estella and SHR uh, for helping us run this webinar today. 
um, and also to you, Scott, for, for giving up your time um, to talk us through some of this. Um, so we will be making the recording available. I do apologise if your question didn't get answered today, but um, we will try and follow up as, with as many of those as possible. And if you do have further questions um, for either Scott or Estella, um, do just email us, content at tripteens.com, and we'll make sure they get, they get put to the, the right person. Um, so that was all from me. Uh, Scott and Estella, I didn't know if you wanted to, to sign off yourselves. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for staying with us through the webinar. And uh, please feel free to reach out from an SHR perspective. We have that direct connectivity with Google. Uh, we definitely work with the Triptease and are seeing some, some great results for our partners. So we're happy to help with your distribution strategy. Yeah, um, yeah, and thank you all for listening. Um, it's really great to be able to talk about this. Uh, my friends and family get very bored of it. Um, so, yeah, I uh, hope to hear, hear more from lots of you in the future. Thanks so much, everybody. So look out for that email tomorrow. We'll be sending around the recording. Thanks. Bye.